Okay, wow, you really sent us a whole lot of stuff about the moon. Articles, research, even your own notes. Looks like someone is ready to go deep on the moon. Yeah, definitely ready for a deep dive into some lunar mysteries. Well, what I find so fascinating about the moon is, you know, it's not just some silent rock hanging out in the sky. Right. The more you dig into it, the more questions you find. It really is. It's like this familiar face we see every night, but we barely know its story. I mean, we all learn the basic stuff about the moon landing in school, but what about all the stuff they didn't teach us? Exactly. And that's where we're going to start our deep dive today. Okay. Love it. We're going to untack some pretty wild theories about the moon's formation, all its strange characteristics, and even, you know, entertain the possibility that it might not be as natural as we've always assumed. Okay, let's unpack this. So hit me with some of the moon's biggest anomalies. What makes it so different from other moons out there? Well, for starters, it's like shockingly large compared to Earth. Like, you know, imagine a chihuahua walking a Great Dane puppy. I love that. That's the kind of size difference we're talking about here. Right. Most moons are tiny compared to their planets, but ours is almost a quarter of the Earth's size. Whoa, that is a huge chihuahua. Right. And I'm guessing that giant size messes with a lot of the current theories about how the moon even formed. It throws a wrench into a lot of them, mm -hmm. like the giant impact hypothesis, which says a Mars-sized object slammed into Earth and the debris formed the moon. But wouldn't all that debris have different origins? Different stuff? Like, wouldn't it all be mixed up? Exactly. But here's the thing. Moon rocks and Earth rocks, they share the same oxygen isotope signature. It basically means they formed at the same distance from the sun, which contradicts the idea of an impactor coming from a totally different part of the solar system. Okay, so the moon is a giant weirdo and it has the same fingerprint as Earth. What, what other lunar oddities are we dealing with? Well, have you ever noticed how almost all the craters on the moon are, well, they're strangely uniform in depth mm. and mostly circular. Yeah. Like if you look at it, it's like someone used a giant cookie cutter on the surface. It's true. I've never thought about it that way. It is a little creepy. Yeah. How consistent they are. It's true. It's true. You would think random asteroid impacts would create more chaos, more variety in the craters, right? You would think so. And then there's the moon's gravitational field. It's lumpy. Okay. With areas of significantly higher and lower gravity. Interesting. And you know, this unevenness has actually led some scientists to propose that the moon might be hollow. Oh, wait, what? Or at least has massive caverns inside. A hollow moon. That's straight out of science fiction. Are there any serious scientists who actually entertain this idea? Believe it or not, yes. Wow. Scientists like Dr. Gord McDonald. Okay. And Dr. Sean C. Solomon. Okay. They've published work exploring this possibility. Data from the Lunar Prospector mission. Well... It suggests a small metallic core, but that does leave room for, like, large caverns. Mm -hmm. So maybe not completely hollow, but perhaps with a Swiss cheese-like interior. Precisely. That's wild. These are just some of the mysteries that make the moon so intriguing. Okay, so how do scientists even begin to explain where this giant, oddly shaped, potentially hollow companion came from? Well, there have been quite a few theories over the years, each with its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Hit me with the lunar origin story greatest hits. Okay. Well, you've got the fission theory, which suggests that the moon was once part of Earth and somehow spun off. Oh, okay. Then there's the co-accretion theory, where Earth acted like a giant vacuum cleaner, attracting a disk of particles that eventually clumped together to form the moon. So either a dramatic breakup or a slow cosmic accumulation. Any other contenders in this lunar formation pageant? We've also got the intact capture theory, which proposes the moon was just wandering through space, minding its own business when Earth's gravity snagged it. Okay. And of course, we can't forget the current favorite, the giant impact hypothesis with that Mars-sized object smashing into Earth. But like we discussed earlier, none of these perfectly explain all of the moon's quirks, especially that whole oxygen isotope similarity, which really suggests the Earth and the Moon are more like siblings than a planet and its adopted moon. Exactly. And that's why some researchers have proposed an even more radical idea. Yeah. The possibility that the Moon wasn't created naturally at all. Okay, hold on. Intentionally created, now we're talking. So is someone suggesting aliens built the Moon? Not necessarily aliens. Okay. But researchers who propose this idea, they call the creators an unknown creative agency, or UCA for short. Okay. 
and they argue that the moon's unique characteristics and its precise relationship with Earth are just too perfect to be mere coincidence. So it's like the moon is a giant cosmic message in a bottle. It's possible. But what kind of message are we talking about here? Mm -hmm. Like, is this a welcome to the galaxy sign or maybe a beware of dog considering, you know, Earth can be a bit of a mess? Well, let's look at some of these, you know, two perfect relationships and you decide. For instance, the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, but also 400 times closer to Earth. Wait, so what you're saying is it's like a cosmic zoom lens. Exactly. That's why they appear the same size in the sky. And it's what makes total solar eclipses possible where the moon perfectly blocks out the sun. Now think about that. What if this precise alignment isn't an accident, hmm. but a deliberate design choice? That's definitely making me rethink my whole cosmic beware of dog sign theory. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. And it gets even more specific. The moon's diameter fits into the Earth's diameter 3.66 times. This number might sound random, but it's actually related to ancient Sumerian measurements and the Earth's precession cycle. Okay, so maybe this UCA has a thing for ancient civilizations. Maybe. And then there's the moon's circumference. 10,928 kilometers, which aligns with the number of Earth diameters and the Sun's diameter, 109.2. Whoa. These aren't just random numbers. They are precise ratios, you know, encoded in the very fabric of our celestial neighborhood. It really is mind-blowing. Hold on, you mentioned something earlier called the megalithic yard. Where does that fit into all of this numerical craziness? Ah, the megalithic yard. It's an ancient unit of measurement, and it reveals even more fascinating connections between the Earth the moon, and the sun. To understand it, we need to take a trip back in time to ancient Sumeria. They used a 366-degree circle, not the 360 degrees we use today. Whoa, really? So they just threw in an extra six degrees for fun? Not exactly. It turns out, using their 366-degree system, the megalithic yard neatly divides the polar circumference of the Earth into 366 units. And guess what? That same 366 is the exact number of times the moon orbits the Earth in 10,000 Earth days. So it's like this ancient unit of measurement was designed with the Earth-Moon relationship in mind. That's wild. It is. And the megalithic yard keeps popping up in other astronomical measurements, too. For instance, based on its circumference, the moon travels at precisely 100 megalithic yards per second of arc, and the sun travels at 40,000 megalithic yards per second of arc. It's a level of precision that seems impossible to achieve by pure chance. I'm starting to see why some people think this is a deliberate design, a message encoded in the cosmos. But who was it meant for and why? Those are the million dollar questions. The moon, as a message theory, suggests it was intentionally placed here as a beacon, a sign for any intelligent life that might evolve on Earth. Like, hey, we're out here and we built you this awesome moon. Enjoy. Exactly. And think about the timing. We're just now reaching a point in human history where we have the scientific understanding to decode these complex relationships. What if it's no coincidence that the moon's current position, which creates those perfect solar eclipses, coincides with the moment we can truly appreciate its significance? What if we were meant to see this message? All right, that's officially blowing my mind. So are we saying that the moon is like a giant cosmic welcome mat for humanity? It's a possibility worth considering. But even if you're not ready to embrace the idea of a UCA, the moon's mysteries still force us to confront the vastness of the unknown and the limits of our current understanding. And that's where things get really interesting, right? Because if the moon is full of surprises, what other secrets might be lurking out there in the cosmos? Exactly. And that brings us to another fascinating aspect of the moon's story. The challenges of actually getting there. Remember those radiation belts surrounding Earth? You mean the Van Allen melts? Yeah. The ones that sound like something straight out of a superhero comic? Those are the ones. They're regions of intense radiation. <laughs> okay. Formed by charged particles from the sun that get trapped by Earth's magnetic field. Right. And they pose a significant challenge for anything or anyone trying to travel through space. Wait, so how did the Apollo astronauts even survive that journey through those radiation belts? Weren't they exposed to, like, dangerous levels of radiation? That's a question that has sparked a lot of debate. The official explanation is that the Apollo missions, well, they were very carefully planned to minimize the astronauts' exposure. So, like, they basically threaded the needle through the least radioactive parts of the belts? Precisely. And they claim the spacecraft had shielding you know, to protect the astronauts from the radiation they did encounter. But I've heard some pretty convincing arguments that even with those precautions, the radiation levels would have been incredibly dangerous, right? 
That's true. I mean, there are definitely conflicting opinions on this. Right. And it's important to acknowledge those different perspectives, you know? Yeah. It makes you wonder about the technology they were using back then. I mean, it was the 60s. Right. I've come a long way since then. You'd think getting to the moon would be like a piece of cake now. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. But here we are, over 50 years later, and we haven't been back to the moon since the Apollo program ended. It's pretty mind-boggling. It's almost like we took this giant leap forward and then just stopped. It is a bit of a head-scratcher. Yeah. Maybe there are other factors at play, things we aren't aware of. Right. Right. Mm. I mean, conspiracy theories are a dime a dozen, but it's hard to ignore the fact that we haven't been back. It's definitely a topic that sparks a lot of debate. Yeah. Some speculation. And perhaps someday, you know, we'll have more definitive answers about the moon landings and and the true extent of our, you know, spacefaring capabilities. Until then, the mystery continues. Yeah. Which brings us back to those weirdly uniform craters. Ah, yes, the cookie cutter craters. They don't quite fit the, you know, typical asteroid impact model, do they? Not really. And you mentioned something about the electric universe theory having a different explanation for those. Right. Proponents of the electric universe theory suggest those craters might not be impact craters at all. Okay. But rather the result of massive electrical discharges. Wait, so you're saying the moon got like zapped by giant lightning bolts? Well, not lightning exactly, but powerful electrical arcs. Yeah. Imagine like a cosmic electrical storm, perhaps during a close encounter with another celestial body like, you know, Mars or Venus. Okay, now that is a seriously electrifying image. It is something else. Are there any real-world examples of this kind of electrical scarring on planets? Absolutely. Look at the Valles Marineris on Mars. It's a gigantic canyon system. Absolutely dwarfs anything we have on Earth. Right. And some scientists believe it was you know, carved out by a massive electrical discharge. And if you look at some of the craters on the moon, they do have those strange branching patterns yeah. that kind of resemble electrical discharges. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the electric universe theory throws a real curveball when it comes to, to understanding the forces shaping our solar system. For sure. And it doesn't just stop at craters. Okay. They have a pretty wild theory about comets, too. Oh, yeah. I've heard a bit about that. Yeah. Something about comets being more than just, you know, dirty snowballs. Precisely. The electric universe theory challenges that conventional view that comets are just, you know, icy chunks of rock and dust. Right. They suggest that comets are actually like electrically charged bodies and those iconic tails we see. Right. Those aren't just ice and dust, you know, sublimating as the comet gets close to the sun. So if it's not a melting snowball, what are they saying causes those spectacular tails? Well... They believe the tails are formed by electrical discharges. Okay. As the comet interacts with the sun's electric field. So it's like the comet is, what, grounding itself, creating this, like, giant cosmic spark? Exactly. And remember that time the Rosetta spacecraft landed on Comet 67P back in 2014? Yeah, yeah. That was a huge deal. Yeah, big news. What did they find that supports this electrical comet idea? Well, one of the biggest surprises was that the comet surface was way harder and rockier than they expected. Interesting. It wasn't the fluffy snowball they were anticipating at all. So more like a space rock with a serious electrical charge? Exactly. And the funny thing is, proponents of the electric universe theory had actually predicted that the lander would, like, bounce off the comet's surface because of its electrical properties. No way. And it actually happened. Yeah. That's amazing. It really makes you wonder what else we might be misunderstanding about these celestial objects, you know? Mm, for sure. So we've got the moon potentially being an intentionally placed beacon, craters formed by cosmic lightning, and comets that are more like electrically charged space rocks. Mm. My head is spinning. Where do we even go from here? I think the most important takeaway is to cultivate a sense of curiosity and, and be open to questioning, well, everything. Yeah. The universe is vast and full of mysteries, and there's always more to learn. And sometimes those mysteries lead to theories that sound completely out there, but might actually hold a piece of the puzzle. Exactly. It's about challenging conventional wisdom and exploring alternative perspectives. Right. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll discover the truth about the moon's origin, those strange craters, and those electrifying comets. And maybe we'll finally figure out if we're truly alone in the universe. Yeah. Or if someone or something left us a giant lunar welcome mat. 
That's the beauty of it all, isn't yeah. it? The possibilities are endless. It really is. It's pretty mind-blowing when you start to think about all the possibilities. You know, when I first started digging into all this moon stuff, I honestly thought it'd be pretty straightforward. Right. But the more I learn, the more I realize how much we just don't know. That's the thing about science, isn't it? Yeah. It's not about having all the answers. Right. It's about constantly asking questions. Yeah. And pushing the boundaries of our understanding. Totally. And sometimes those like most outlandish sounding theories, yeah. they turn out to have some real merit. Right. Makes you wonder if there are other big ideas out there just, you know, waiting to be discovered. Absolutely. I mean, the history of science is full of examples of ideas that were initially dismissed as crazy, but later became, you know, widely accepted. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, like the theory of continental drift, for instance. Oh, yeah. The idea that all the continents were like smushed together yeah. and have been slowly drifting apart for millions of years. Yeah. Oh. I remember learning about that in school and thinking, no way, that's impossible. Right. And yet today it's like a fundamental principle of geology. It's actually. So it just goes to show we should never be afraid to question the status quo. Right. Consider alternative explanations. Absolutely. It's all about keeping an open mind. Yeah. And realizing that our understanding of the universe Yay. is constantly evolving. It is. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about studying the moon. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a constant source of mystery and wonder, and it forces us to rethink our place in the cosmos. It's like a giant mirror reflecting back our own curiosity yeah and our desire to make sense of the universe i love that you know this whole deep dive into the moon yeah it's really made me think about something what's that well we've talked about all these incredible theories you know the moon is a message the electric universe the challenges of space travel right but ultimately what does it all mean for you the listener right what can you take away from all of this that's a great question i think for me it's a reminder to never stop asking questions, mm -hmm. to never stop being curious about the world around us. Yeah. Whether it's the moon, the stars, or even just the everyday things we take for granted, there's always something new to discover if we just take the time to look. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's also a reminder that our understanding of the universe is constantly evolving. So what we think we know today might be completely different tomorrow. Exactly. So keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep looking up. Who knows what incredible discoveries await us in the future? And maybe, just maybe, the next big breakthrough will come from someone like you listening right now. Someone who isn't afraid to challenge conventional wisdom and think outside the box. The truth is out there somewhere, among the stars. Until next time, keep those minds curious. <laughs>